All right, today we're going to be talking about our cell wall synthesis inhibitors as far as antibiotics go. So just to start it out, I'm going to lay out what I've drawn here, which is just a melee of information. So this is a, a gram-positive bacteria, and the reason that I drew it as having like all these red lines around it is because these are your peptidoglycan layers, and gram-positive bacteria have usually about 80 to 100 peptidoglycan layers, whereas your gram negatives, uh, the, the difference is they only have you know a few, maybe four to six peptidoglycan layers, but then outside of that they have an extra cellular membrane, and that's that's really key because uh, that extra cellular membrane adds a ability for protection for them. It controls uh, what kind of molecules are able to get you know in and out, uh, just like for waste nutrients, and it plays an uh, important role in the protection of the gram negatives against bacteria, I mean against antibiotics. So, so uh, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just kind of show you what I've drawn here. So we have a few different things. Um, I guess we'll start with penicillin because that was the first one to be discovered. So penicillin's action is to uh, bind to what are called penicillin binding proteins. I wrote it here as PVP, and both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria have these PVPs, and they just called that out of, you know, just historically, but what they really are is transpeptidase enzymes, and they play a crucial role in attaching uh, part of your peptidoglycan layer. So the other thing, um, so I guess before we get to, to how they work, the, really the key would be to see how the peptidoglycan layer starts. So, um, so when you're within a, a bacterial cell, rather, regardless of whether it's gram negative or positive, um, peptidoglycan layers are, are being created from these precursor molecules, and those are your NAG and NAM, which is N-acetylglutamine, and N-acetylmuranic acid, and those are basically synthesized in the nucleus, I mean, or sorry, in the cytoplasm of the bacteria, and then they're put together um, by, you know, they're put together like with it, basically by these BPP, which is a, uh, which is a bact bactoprenol phosphate, and that's, that basically what it does, it comes in here and it grabs it grabs the, the parts, the NAM and the NAG, and it, it brings them out to the outside of the cell, and it kind of just lays them out with, within this, uh, you know, this new wall that's being formed. And, and bacteria are constantly recycling their wall. Um, you know, they're, they're, as their wall starts to degenerate, they're, they're always putting out new peptidoglycans, and they're attaching the, these sugar molecules to each other to create, you know, just a, a better, more functional wall. Um, so yeah, so, so I guess I'll, from there I'll kind of talk about the way that different uh, antibiotics can work to uh, like inhibit the cell wall synthesis. So again, uh, the first one, penicillin, it comes in and it, it, is, it, it just, uh, it's able to, penicillins, which are just one of your, they're, uh, they're part of the group uh, of beta-lactam antibiotics, and what, what these beta-lactam antibiotics do is they have this, uh, this structure that allows them to basically block out the PVP. So they come in and you know, they kind of make their way through, it's like a little maze, but the peptidoglycan layer is porous, so they are able to pass through, and they bind to you know, one of these penicillin binding proteins and they block its action to be its action being the uh, beta lac uh, sorry being transpeps transpeptidation and so basically what happens with that is is you can have cell walls being you know the peptidoglycan are still being synthesized they're being put out there but they're not actually attaching like one layer to the next so you just have these you know basically concentric layers that are attached to each other like within one layer, but the uh, you know each concentric layer is not actually attached to the next one. So that basically uh, inhibits like you know any good structural integrity of that. So these are your beta lactam antibiotics, 
And really the key key to the beta lactam antibiotics is this is this ring that they have. This uh, you know, it's basically like a, a square. And that that ring is like is, is what does the binding and blocking of the the transpeptidase enzymes. So the other beta lactams besides penicillin are uh, your cephalosporins, uh, carbapenems, and these all really work the same way. The only difference is that whereas your, um, you know, your penicillin has one structure of this outer area, um, cephalosporins different, carbapenems, they're, they're all just different. They're produced by different bacteria, I mean, by, sorry, by different fungi. And the uh, you know they're just structurally different. It kind of gives like a bit of variety for us because you know bacteria can become resistant to one, but not necessarily be resistant to to the other. Of course, some bacteria are resistant to all all of your beta lactam antibiotics. Um, one example of that would be your 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 MRSA, your methicillin resistant um, Staph aureus, and. That one, it is, uh, yeah, it's basically, it doesn't matter which one of your beta-lactam antibiotics you're using, it's going gonna, it's gonna to block them, and it's just not going to let them work. So, um, so on the other hand, unlike your beta-lactams, which, which act by uh, their effect on the penicillin binding protein, you also have uh, like a, the vancomycin class, and vancomycin basically works um, similarly, but by a slightly different mechanism. What it does is instead of um, instead of blocking the transpeptidation, you know, blocking one layer from being able to be bound to uh, to the next layer uh, through these like through these attachments. Um, it, what vancomycin does is it, it blocks the glycosylation, which is what allows you know um, adjacent uh, NAM and NAG units of the peptidoglycan layer to be attached to each other. So basically, whereas your uh, your beta lactams are, are breaking one layer from the uh, from you know the layer outside or inside of it and just not allowing them to be attached. Your vancomycins are breaking it, you know, I guess vertically if you're looking at it this way, or just basically they're they're breaking apart here in between them, so that they, so that just adjacent ones cannot be connected. Um, is that somewhat clear? That's could be better, but um, so and then another another uh, way that antibiotics could, can work as cell wall synthesis inhibitors is by uh, blocking the action of the bactoprenol phosphate, which I have here as BPP. And the way that that works is, um, again, it's both gram-negative and gram-positive. It's that this, this BPP, bactoprenol phosphate, basically works to grab onto the, these, uh, you know, peptidoglycan subunits and, you know, convert them from being on the inside to the outside of the of the, the inner cell membrane of gram negatives or the only cell membrane of gram positives. And so by blocking this and not allowing this you know, conversion from, with, from within to outside, you can't even do anything to, uh, you, you, just, you, know, you can't even start building your cell wall. And obviously, you know, it just, it's gonna, they're gonna structurally degrade and uh, that's how they'll end up lysing and dying. Um, so, yeah, any, any, any questions so far? No, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you drink it in, what I got here, while I, while I kind of figure out what, what to say next. Um, yeah, so, so one of the big, sorry, so what, go ahead. What, did you talk about the enzyme for like oscillation? Um, oh okay, yeah, I kind of skipped over that, I guess. Uh, I kind of mentioned vancomycin, but really, I, I, I should have been more specific as to how it works. So, whereas your beta-lactams bind to the PBP, your penicillin binding protein, the transpeptidase enzyme, and block that function, vancomycin does pretty much the same thing. It comes in, 
and it, it's able to bind to uh, your enzyme for glycosylation and it blocks your ability to glycosylate and that's how vancomycin basically disrupts the uh, cell wall by not allowing uh, you know, one peptidoglycan, uh, you know, which is a sugar molecule, from binding to the next one. So you know, they work very similarly, just kind of one works between layers and one works within a layer. And that's the major distinction between them. Um, so the, the thing about the, the penicillins and all your beta-lactams really is that you know, uh, you know, fungi have been producing these for, for forever and, and the bacteria have already created a lot of ways to get around this. So one of the things that bacteria have been able to do is produce what's called a beta-lactamase, which is a, an enzyme that, that breaks apart this, uh, the beta-lactam ring, which is so crucial for the, for the functioning of these antibiotics. So what happens, and this is kind of a one way that you can distinguish the gram negative from the gram positive, is that these, these beta-lactamases, which I've drawn here as scissors for cutting the beta-lactam ring, uh, they are produced, again, in, you know, in the cell cytoplasm, and they're, they're being excreted. So within a gram-positive bacteria, what happens is when they're excreted, you know, they, can, they can stay kind of close by, but they're not held in by an outer cell membrane. So what happens is, you know, they kind of diffuse away, and that's, it works for them for having, you know, uh, some more widespread effects, but it, it is more problematic for them in terms of protection because as these diffuse away, it's, there's, you know, there's less of a protection close around them. Whereas your gram negatives, on the other hand, they have this outer membrane. So what, what happens is these are, these are constantly being produced, these beta-lactamases, and they stay between the two layers, which is called the periplasmic space, and that's just this area between these two. And, and by staying in the periplasm, they're able to get really concentrated. And so what happens is, you know, you, you're, you, you have a, you know, a beta-lactam antibiotic, and it's able to get in. You know, you've got your antibiotic, and it comes in. But it gets in here, and there's just all these beta-lactamases, which are just ready to cut it up. And so that, you know, that poses a big problem for us when it comes to treating the gram-negatives. And it's one of the reasons that gram-negative bacteria is so much harder to treat. Um, and then another reason that gram-negative bacteria are a lot harder to treat has to do with the, uh, the fact that, well, not all of them, but a lot of them will have efflux pumps. So even if you could get a, you know, an antibiotic that, that was protected enough to get you know, in and, and maybe had a structure that blocked it from being affected by the beta-lactamase, you still have these efflux pumps which are can pump it right back out. So that's another reason that you know, they, be, they become so problematic for us. Um, and then and one more mechanism of, that makes gram negatives so much more of a pain for us to, to kill off is the, the porins. And the porins are huge because the peptidoglycan layer itself is very, uh, it has, it has it's, it's, a, it's a porous uh, wall, it's, you know, it allows things to pass through very easily. Uh, so I mean it does block like you know macromolecules from, from passing through, but it's not very preventative of you know most of your normal size molecules. So your gram positives, you know, a large a large molecule, a large antibiotic can usually get in and have its effect on all these um, cell membrane enzymes and and you know that's how it can have its effect. However in a gram negative the porins, they, they're, you know, they're, they're different sizes and the, uh, you know, if they're really small, obviously your bulky antibiotics are not going to be able to get in. If they're large, your bulky antibiotics will get in, but some of these gram-negative bacteria have the ability to, uh, to like adjust from one generation to the next, adjust the size of their pores. Um, you know, one, a good, great example of that is Pseudomonas aeruginosus, which is like the bane of people with cystic fibrosis because they have a compromised immune system and uh, treatment with antibiotics is really tough.